Hello. Hello. Hey. Hello. I made it. I made it. Wow, look at everybody here. Amazing. Just getting ready, getting set up, settled up. How's everybody doing? Good. I'm doing good. Got a nice fresh cup of coffee, ready to go. Me too. Me too. Do we get all of the stuff that we're going to drop ready today? Got a couple different things, right? I don't know. I guess we'll find out as we go. <laughs> yes, everybody. We work really hard to be ready to talk to you. It's good to see everybody. Um, wow. Lots of familiar names. Thanks, everybody, for sending in the questions. Some team members in the audience as well, as I, I see. Let's see. Let me get our. Let me get to the discussion channel so I can see everybody's questions and everything. And then also get our nice cool doc. How did everybody like the competition this week? Hope everybody had a good time. I don't see anybody in chat saying anything. <laughs> Oh, good. Everybody loved it. If those new mines probably helped a lot. Same with the, the salt field timers and the sand mine timers. Really helps ease some of those land rush stresses, I imagine. Make it harder. I don't know if you know what you're asking Mel to do. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, like, okay, then. <laughs> well, that's just Willow keeps saying that again and again, but uh, Ed777 says the competition is a hard one. So maybe some people have different uh, tricks, have different things that they're doing. Well, it was we definitely a, a complex competition to try to balance. I gave it a try, and I was not, not as successful as I would have liked to have been. <laughs> We did send out those uh, fabric box competition rewards yesterday, though, so that's exciting. We had a rare bakery and a cakery sale this week as well. Hope for everybody who wanted one of those picked one up. We have our full crew of team members here now. We, uh, oh. We're all staged up. I think so. All right. Well, why don't why don't we why don't we officially kick off? Welcome everybody to today's AMA, Friday, September twenty third, twenty twenty two. Um, it's great to see everybody here. So, Michelle, why don't you why don't you take it away through our agenda? We got a we got a kind of a packed thing today with some cool stuff to show. Yeah, I mean, I just went over some of those updates that happened this week. There wasn't a ton of stuff; it was just the the competition, mm -hmm. those changes to some of the core aspects of the game that really helped a lot with land rush i hope uh, we did the bakery and cakery sale and we sent out some rewards yesterday that's cool yes nlo i am reading the chat while the ama is happening how about um so i'm looking at our agenda do we want to show um do we have that video ready to drop and show people i can do it Go for it. So let's see. Oh no. Oh snap. Thank you for the last round on rewards. Fast turnaround. Yes. Um, so we're trying to do what we said. Get the rewards out quickly. Yeah, so many cheaters. We know. We know at 777. Let me know when you drop that uh, that video, Michelle. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> it's it's uploading. Is. Oh, there we go. Um, why don't you? Why don't you? Who's the best person to walk to walk us through this video? It's a skin, so it goes over the express depot or your normal depot. So that would still require oh. gasoline. It's okay. a time a time skin, basically. Okay. Is Jimmy riding on it? 
Interesting question, Crypto Yami. That's a very interesting question, Yami. <laughs> Barrow or Biaro, Jimmy conquered the aliens. Do they use jet fuel? That is pretty cool. I mean, I, when I first saw this and the team shared it with me, I was like, ah, I love it because it kind of gives an extra little bit of spice. It kind of expresses the personality of the team. And it also, to me, is an exciting kind of view on how much easier it's going to be able to do this stuff as we as we create Townstar forever. So some, some, great, some great engineering work and teamwork to get that done. And um, of course, it'll be something we can transfer over into the new game as we continue to work on that. I was surprised what comes out next. That's good. Good. One of the things I believe in as a game maker, and it's something, uh, a phrase I coined oh, about 15 years ago, was surprise and delight. That's part of our job as game makers and entertainers is to surprise and delight our audience. So I'm glad that's working. There's some questions there for you, Mal. Is it uh, going to be faster than the dragon? Still can't use dragon in block spots. Yeah, so the is it faster than the dragon? Yes, but remember the dragon is clean. It doesn't take gasoline. It's lovely in that way, whereas this is merely a skin for the uh, normal in-game truck and your express depot. So, you know, it's a skin, not a, it's not removing the need for gasoline. But yes, timing-wise, it is incredibly fast. It is... It moves very quickly, and it's got a lovely animation with it, but it depends how you view a dragon versus a truck. Some people are using both anyway. If you're not using a dragon, then it'd be probably because you don't want to use gasoline anyway, so it shouldn't conflict with that. Good call, good call. Uh, what's next, Michelle? Maybe we should, hey, you know, I realized we've got uh, a bunch of people up here on stage. Maybe we should just take a moment and let everybody reintroduce themselves to the to the crowd. What do you guys think? That sounds awesome. Let's do it. Maybe go. Um, gosh, I don't know what order we should go in, but why don't we just pop off and then, uh, you know, somebody somebody go first. Uh, this is Volkron. I could do it first. Um, tech lead for Town Start Engineering, um, and uh, I've been here closing on four months. So have a long uh, history, multi, probably too many <laughs> years in game development and i um, super happy to be here and uh, super excited about Townstar Forever. Um, my nickname from SageMaker is, um, well, you guys know what it is because I drop leaks on occasion. <laughs> uh, that's Tom me. Holland. <laughs> Tom Holland. That's great. Who's next? One odd agent. Yeah, one odd gent. Go ahead. Hey, what's up, everyone? So, my name is one odd gent, or known as Todd. Pretty humble private say I'm the lead UI designer for Townstar. That's for end game as well as the NFTs and humongous fan of just being in the Discord. So, been with Gala for close to a year and a half now, time flies, and just loving every bit of it. Love the game, love the community. And as Volcron mentioned, just looking forward to Townstar forever. It's going to be great. Thank you. Welcome. Who's next? How about Musashi? Yeah, sure. Hey, guys. Uh, so I'm the uh, lead game designer on uh, forever. Uh, so working on that full time. Uh, try to go as, as quick as possible. I have over ten, you know, over fourteen years of experience at this point in game design. Uh, working a lot with uh, free to play mobile and some experience with Web three, but learning way more about it now than this team, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, hoping to make a you know design a great game for you guys. Thanks, Musashi. Resaurus. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, sorry, I'm late. Um, I'm Rishoris. I'm the live producer slash uh, release manager for um, Townstar. 
Um, I come from a background in um, actually, well, you might imagine release management and mm -hmm. build engineering and live production. I worked on um, some titles you probably have heard of, um, including Fallout 76. Um, and I worked in an undisclosed title that's not quite released at Ubisoft. Um, and uh, yeah, I love what I do here and I love this team and, and this game's a blast and you guys make it all worth it. So I'm glad to be here. Welcome, welcome. So um, do Mal and Michelle need any introduction to you guys? I think everybody knows who I am. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. And Mal too. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be reintroduce ourselves all again. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, well, cool. So well, let's let's jump on to the next step of the agenda. Uh, we got Townstar Forever updates next. I don't know what we've got planned for that. I don't know if you and Volcron want to take that over. Sure. Sure. Why don't we? Um, you know, maybe. I don't know, Volker, why don't you give us a general update, but then we also have something that, else that we want to share with everybody, right? Yeah, we do. Uh, we have a little video uh, that we want to share. I guess the um, the exciting... How do I, how do I not <laughs> spoiler this up? Um, <laughs> the, that's, that's why I just that's why we didn't prepare. I wanted to see where right. you would go today. <laughs> Let's see. Well, it's no surprise that we're, of course, pulling in the sounds and the music. Uh, that that's pretty cool. Godot support for that is good. The UI, um, a couple had a couple good surprises on some of the things the devs have been doing. You know, when you click a tile and get the info thing that pops up. Um, I think last week I went on and on about how much I love our our backend team. I think I called them the invisible pillars. So I, I won't gush about that again. But um, yeah, just. Thing I, I think one of the coolest things is supporting the game at scale, like we keep talking about, you know, having towns that live forever, um, large towns, um, features. I, I don't want to talk about the features in progress, um, but yeah, I don't know. Let me, uh, I could read off the list of things that we've kind of brought in. What do you, what do you think? That sounds good. The, Okay. Give it a shot, man. Give it a shot. Okay. Give me give me uh, 20 seconds to pull that list up. It's a big list. Maybe uh, Michelle could talk about something while I pull that up. Sorry, I threw you under the bus, Michelle. <laughs> Here, I'll, do it. I'll, br I'll bring something up. One of, the, one of the things is, I'll just kind of give a little preview of this video clip. Um, one of the things that you do when you're making a game is... Uh, you know, you have to test out performance and test out, you know, max, you know, maximizing your server or maxing out your server. Um, can you actually do all the things that you want to plan on doing? And so we've been talking about a larger um, game board, a larger town, larger sized town. And we're going to show you after um, Volcron speaks a little bit about some of the work that's been done. Um, we're going to give you a, a preview yeah. of what that looks like. Yeah, and, and the video that we'll be sharing was pretty fun to put together. I've I randomized my town at a 64 by 64, and with a random amount of workers, I think it was 200 and about 1,200 buildings or so. And then as far as the, the buildings that we've got in the game and looking good, there's the logger and the log house, lumberjack and the lumberjack house, the windmill, sugar cane, wheat, uh, woodshed, salt field, rock ponds, oak tree farm, oak tree farm, Marsh the silo and fuel storage. Um, uh, I this sound this probably sounds a little weird, but I really like our camera controls. I think like if you play games like Eve Online or or Town Star, you know where you can spin the camera. I don't know. It, maybe I'm the only one, but I love spinning it, zooming in and out, adding uh, keyboard shortcuts, of course, so you can WASDA and plus and minus to zoom in and out and pan. Um, uh, yeah, that's all. All I'd like to okay. potentially. That's a pretty good out. list. So a lot of it sounds like um, you know just to kind of reiterate a lot of the the parts and pieces that are coming together in terms of actually working inside the game. So we're kind of moving a step beyond just pure technology right now, right? Pure back and systems. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, it's, sounds like it's a good time to drop that video. Who, who's going to do that? All right, I will drop it. Yeah, reiterate. I did say that resource.
for a permanent town, what about having access access to mountains, rivers, oceans, etc., especially for the for a larger term town? Um, right now, the intention uh, is that for your persistent town, everybody starts with the same uh, game board. Uh, competition towns would be more like what you see right now in start of, inside of Townstar Live. So there will be some variation in there, but it's only fair if you're going to build a large, uh, gigantic town and everybody, you know, has their town last forever to start people in the same place. There you go. Right. Oh, it's MP4. Okay. So everybody get a chance and you know, give a moment for people to take it, download that nice MP4 there and take a look at it. Not final. <laughs> Thank you for adding that little caption on the way. What do you guys think? Too small. Too small. Too big. One person <laughs> says too small, the other says too big. <laughs> too, some said too small there. That's Are we crazy. talking? Oh, I see. Well, try downloading it. It's It's a... Oh, the resolution yeah, download it. Yeah. <laughs> the browser it. might be interfering with you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yes, definitely download it. Um, Some questions about the FPS, Fulcron. I believe you've got that working nicely on an old yeah. machine. Uh, right. It, it's only 60 FPS because my monitor kept at 60 FPS. Um, in the future, I may plug in the fancy monitor and for these kind of videos. Uh, there was a comment, no roads. Yeah, Grumpy, we we do have roads in. Um, right now, I didn't include them on here because, you know, you have the road end, the road middle, and the road side. I just, uh, to be honest, I just got lazy. I didn't want to write that part of the logic for this generator. This was more of an FPS test. So some people are asking, uh, how are we going to keep the workers from walking all the way across? Um, the intention is that your workers will kind of stay local to the buildings that they've come from. Um, so I make more buildings, make more farmhouses and, and stuff so that they focus on those things. Um, if you guys have played any RTS games, you know that when you have a harvester out there collecting, it'll collect and do the work in the area, continue going back to its uh, collection center. Uh, but then if things run out, then they start wandering. We'll see how that, that logic works in this game. It seems to work pretty well for that genre for a long time, although this map is way, way larger than those kind of things. So we'll have to see how that works. Yeah, there's questions about pathfinding. Uh, right now it's just from source to destination, just in the video. Um, I didn't want to show off our pathfinding work in progress. And yeah, your observations are right when people say, hey, wait, these units don't need roads anymore. That's not the case. That's This is purely a... Uh, tech demo with more units and more buildings in a large town. Alien farmers. Interesting, interesting. Yes, that's interesting. So yes from me. Yeah, so uh, Willow, there's one thing. Yes, uh, this is the this is just a map that we put together to test the size and to kind of show off how strong the tech is. Um, uh, the idea, just like other classic city building and farm building games, is that different parts of your map, your permanent world map, um, will have different uh, landscapes to it. Let's just call it that. Different sections that you can open up and uh, play inside of. All right, other questions about this ginormous piece of tech? And seems pretty cool, right? I mean. When I first saw it, I was like, oh my god, it is huge. ZXCX, yeah. What kind of hardware do you have, ZXCS? CX. Right. Well, how about, um, what do you guys think? Should we move on to questions, Q&A time? What do you think, Michelle? Yeah, we can move on into questions. Okay. Why don't you lead us, lead us through this. Uh, first question I have is about Godot. It says, Godot offers no support services. While it is super cheap, as in free, it is not for serious commercial projects. 
how will you get around the lack of support? I could take that one. Go for um, it. It is open source, right? So our um, boy, how do you how do you say this? It's a great question, right? Obviously, as a player, you're concerned, like, oh, what if you're relying on blah and there's not enough support? Well, it is open source. So although the Godot team is awesome, clearly they they put out an amazing product. Uh, but if there comes a point where their bug fixing priorities don't match with ours, we'll just fix it ourselves. Yeah, that's easy. You know, we did look at different engines as we're doing this, and everybody's, you know, me especially because I've made Unity games before. Look at Unity. Um, you know, we didn't we didn't actually as a team look at Cocos, uh, but that's another option, and you know, so is Unreal. Uh, the reason we picked it out is because it works. It is uh, easy to use. We have the source, and also it works uh, well with web. Some of the other engines are not as strong in their support of web, even though they're great for, you know, um, mobile games and console games and whatnot. Um, we also have been in contact with the uh, the team there, so uh, we know the limits and the, the extents of their support, and they're willing to help out if we run into something that's really difficult. So um, another thing we've noticed as we've been um, adding more engineers to the team there are more and more uh, people out there in the ecosystem that are using Godot. And um, actually more out there, or our experience is that they're more out there uh, using Godot than they are using Play Canvas, which is what we used to use. So um, yeah, we're, we're feeling, feeling pretty strong. Jason, it, the engine feels really strong there, right? I mean, it's we're not running any, any limitations, yeah. yeah no, so. it's, it's extremely simple uh, in a good way. Uh, uncomplicated, I should say, and flexible. I'm super impressed with it. Uh, having uh, done Unity, Unreal, um, Lumberyard, Slipspace, those are just some of the engines I've worked on. Um, yeah, Godot, very good. Cool. What's our next question, Michelle? Uh, the next question I have is, in the future, would it be possible for a fee to upsize an NFT, for example, a common water tower to an uncommon water tower? That sounds like something you should answer, Musashi. Uh, yeah, sure. So the truth is that we are looking at progression in all senses. When you have 64, you know, a max 64 by 64 in persistent town, you probably want some of your buildings to and workers to progress. So we're looking at progression uh, for both types of buildings, you know, on NFT and NFTs. Uh, we haven't married to any idea there yet, but definitely we're looking into that as something very important for the future of the game. Yeah, there's one thing that we've talked about. Um, I, I kind of see building out a town or a farm as a as sort of a, a two dimensional thing. First, you you go wide with your buildings and your crops and your animals and everything. And then you go tall or deep, however you, however you want to describe it, which is exactly what Musashi is saying, where you, you build in progression. So your building goes from level one to level two, level three, and that kind of thing. And of course, with that progression comes more, you know, more stats, if you want to speak about it generically, maybe more functionality as well. So um, that's what we're thinking. What's next, Michelle? The next question is, will you please tell us more about the new system for TownCoin and more about how it will be earned and used in the economy? Oh, yes, economy, economy, economy. We've talked about that. We have been working on it and working on it, working on it right now. Actually, today, this afternoon, we have a, a review with the experts at our company to see if all of our crazy ideas um, work. Um, and that review just involves pulling in you know, an economy team, you know, all of the folks that have been working on the other economies for other games, and kind of talking through what we want to do. Um, our whole goal in creating it is keep things as simple as possible and make sure that we take care of all of our NFT owners and our node owners in the process as well. So hopefully, well, we'll see. My, my expectation is we'll probably have between one to three iterations on the, the design that we've come up with. Um, again, looking, taking into account some of the feedback from the experts that we have, and then we're going to want to create a, you know, real working, you know, spreadsheet or Python file just to check out it through a real simulation run. But that's, that's where we're at with it. So progress is still going as soon as we can talk about it. Of course we will. 
I think the rest of the questions I have are design questions. So Musashi may be taking most of them. Uh, the first one cool. is, are there any plans to add mini games inside Townstar? Maybe livestock breeding and animal pageants. Right. So um, our priority right now is to get to the persistent town along with bringing all the goodness of the competition mode that you are accustomed to. Um, so even though we're, we are thinking about those things in the future, we want to be able to have an awesome experience in the core first. So making sure that your persistent, work, uh, persistent time works, competitions are fun, and that we have those other elements that we mentioned, like progression. So the short answer is we're thinking about it, but we have other priorities first. Good answer. All right, the next question I have is, how do you envision Townstar Forever Persistent Mode to be an NFT blockchain game? An NFT blockchain? Oh, so basically uh, the persistent mode, it's uh, similar to what, what you have already, but um, not, this, not with the ticking bomb, right? We're thinking about players who want to uh, uh, basically build a town over the long term. Right, and hopefully then move on to uh, maybe other biomes or other types of towns once you fill up your 64 by 64. So it's quite different from the uh, interesting and fast-paced competition mode that you already have right, to port over to a new game, where it's like, oh, we're trying to build something specific to build specific crafts to get earn points. Um, so think about it like uh, very long-term, trying to build a consistent and interesting town bit by bit. Uh, it's not a, a, a one week thing, right? It's months, <laughs> maybe maybe more than that, that you're trying to improve and improve your output. Does that answer the question? Sorry, I was I muted there. I think so. Problem. Yeah, <laughs> good answer. Uh, the next question I have is, are you planning on eliminating land rush? And if so, what are your ideas for land grabs going forward? Um, I'll jump in on that. Uh, in general direct answer, yes, or at least mitigating them significantly. We've got a lot of ideas. And again, like most things, when we pick the final answer, we'll make sure we sell it. But obviously, um, you know, we, we understand the concern. And, you know, whether it's you don't have time to jump in right when when it opens up, or if you're worried about people bonding and picking the best spots, we're very well aware of those things. We'll, we'll do what we can to take care of that. All right, moving fast today. So how will 64 by 64 towns come into play? Will they be in competitions? How would we be able to use the land expansion? Is it purchased through in-game coin or what? That for me? Yeah, go uh, for it. <laughs> uh, so uh, the land expansions is something that uh, I think that we we can't talk about yet because we're discussing you know the whole the whole plan. But the idea is that you would start with your uh, uh, current sixteen by sixteen in persistent mode, and then slowly uh, go up to sixty four by sixty four, and slowly means over months, of months right? Um, for the competition, uh, that's an interesting one because what we're doing uh, by expanding the potential map is um, basically creating more design space. Right now, right now you have a certain type of event that you're accustomed to. I know that you guys love. Uh, we want to bring that over to the new game, uh, but we also want to create new competition modes, right? So uh, the way I see it personally is like, oh, we could have, a, we, uh, this week's event could be just a 16 by 16 uh, map, but then next week's event could be 32 by 32, right? Or something like that, because you're asked to do something different. So the good thing about expanding the map is that uh, we can create uh, different types of competition that you haven't seen before. That's cool. And I just want to add one point there when you said, you know, uh, expand up, maybe it takes months to get to 64 four by 64. We'll actually have to see because, um, you know, we obviously there'll be some gameplay involved in, to, in unlocking other parts of it. And um, 
you know, that may take a little bit longer than a few months for some folks. Let's uh, just take a quick pause here and look at the questions that are popping up in the community. Um, guys, jump in. What do you see? Uh, we've got one from Crazy Town that says, what's the role of NFTs in the persistent mode? Will there be advantages for NFT owner for playing persistent mode or will it just be for fun and NFTs are for competitions? Um, yo, no, that's a, that's a great question. So yes, you just, you'll be able to use your NFTs inside of persistent mode. Um, same stats and utility there. Um, and then when you're using them inside of competition mode, uh, stats utility and that magic word earning that we're talking about. So um, think about it as these are your toys for your, for your sandbox. And so, yes, we want you to use them everywhere possible. And that's part of our job as a game making team to say we have all of these toys that people have. Let's bring them into this great fun sandbox that we're making. What else? There you go. Utility, expression, novelty, and toys. Yeah, um, but yeah so here's a great point. Um, the NFTs that we have, are, we're going to be making more. So uh, I saw that. Who's it? There's a mysterious peanut there. Thank you for raising that up. Um, I am super excited the fact that as we're growing the town, and we're really close to telling you some more about um, some of the features that we'll be adding, it's just toys in a sandbox. Just fun experience, having stuff work together. You know, people, Cranebot, Farmbot, everything else that we've had in the past become much more a fun reality uh, inside of Townstar Forever. So um, stay tuned for that. But yeah, toys in a sandbox, that's the mentality that, um, that I think of this. We'll be in TSA Tourist. Uh, interesting rocket unit. Um, I don't know, Michelle. Should I should I talk about that idea that uh, you came up with? Is it a good time it. to leak that? Is that a good time to leak that? That's one hundred percent up to you. <laughs> okay. Well. Okay. So here's here's a here's an unplanned leak. So you can call me Tom Holland this week, except for I'm not accidentally leaking it. Uh, there's an intention behind it. Will there be tourists in the game? You have your Gala Malta Hotel. Um, I'm just gonna do. Let me let me kind of talk like Mal does. Imagine if. You're making some wine. Imagine there's, say, a wine store or a winery or something like that, and you're selling your wine in the market, and it's all cool. But one day you notice uh, a long black stretch limo drives up and stops at that, at that destination there. And maybe some people jump out and visit that store and end up buying um, because they're you know, basically a wine tour kind of thing. And they up, end up buying some of the wine that you've made at 10x the price that you can sell it in the marketplace, right? Because they're tourists, right? So yes, there's a long-term intention to add that. Um, it's actually part of the gameplay thinking uh, that we've been going over for a while. And that idea itself actually came from uh, Farmer Michelle as we were having a design discussion a couple of weeks ago. So yes, you nailed it, Mysterious Peanut, and you created an unintended uh, leak, or you, you spurred an unintended leak. So there you go, Den Dendade, Dendade, Dendade. Nice. All right. I don't want metaverse tourist thieves. <laughs> I love how you guys take one idea and then you just like low way beyond it now we have thieves in the game <laughs> when we were talking about tourists uh yeah what are there any other questions in there we should pick up uh the only other one i seen quick was ed 777 asking about the dynamic city prices that we've talked about previously yeah yeah definitely that's so that's one of those aspirational goals um will be very cool. Um, we've got to get the economy in and stable. Um, and we have that in, in our mind as we're building this. Uh, there's a lot to that, but I'd love to get that in there. So it's a, it's a strong desire. Um, we'll have to, we'll just have to plan it. We ha and we have some other ideas. So let me, let me just say, we're like, oh yeah, we kind of like to do that. Good idea. Um, we've been doing some thinking in the background on how we get that uh, dyna dynamic pricing uh, to be cool and not just be some sort of weird algorithmic thing. Um, but we'll be able to share more on that later. 
Let's keep going on the uh, the AMAs. What else do we got? Uh, I'm sorry on the on the questions, Michelle. So uh, well, the next question I have here is: How are you developing AI for workers to be better in the new game? Which I'm sure oh, is just about uh, pathfinding. Yeah, yeah. So AI again, we kind of answered this one before. Um, when people think of AI in Townstar, they're thinking of the workers pathfinding in weird ways or going to weird buildings. Um, yes, we're working on that. It's not necessarily AI code inside of. Uh, the, the, the workers. Uh, it is a lot about getting pathfinding right, improving it, and then also having the goal system or the priority system for the workers uh, tuned up a bit more. So yes, and you know, as some people mentioned with a much larger map, you have to make sure this works out pretty well. Now, I will tell you, I am 100% sure we're not going to solve every single case, right? Having worked on enough games of pathfinding before, we know there's going to be some oddnesses here and there. Um, but of course, as soon as we find those, we'll do our best to eliminate them or mitigate them. Um, so definitely, um, definitely pathfinding will be better. And I know Volcron and team are working on that. So that'd be, that'd be cool. What's next? Well, let's see here. The next one I have, I think we answered last week. It says, to clarify what I asked before, currently in comps, once town is built, we can't play, like go back to a practice server, etc. Question was, on the new platform, will we be able to go to a practice area or persistent town and not break the competition session? I imagine yeah. they're talking about playing on multiple different areas at yeah. the same time. Yeah, or multiple different servers. So one of the, um, who asked this? Somebody kept asking this last week, and I, and I thought we'd talk about it. Um, if you did, don't be shy. Uh, chime in. I'm just curious. Oh, Ra, you did you ask that? Okay. Um, the, uh, yeah, welcome back. Uh, the, uh, yeah, the idea is, and I get what people are saying, is if um, you know, we have your persistent town and you have your competition town that it's playing, well, uh, can you jump off and do some practice while you have competition time going up? Maybe for a new meta or something? Mm, yes, yes. Now we have to build this still. It's not built yet. But the idea is if, we ha if we're able to have multiple competitions at the same time, if we're able to have multiple town states at the same time, I mean, it kind of makes sense to have a practice town uh, that you can build into. Now that's a lot of work. Once, you know, we still have to get this put together. But yes, that'll be the intention is so that you're not stuck. And, you know, it may take a couple of iterations to get there, but definitely, definitely there. There's a question in the chat that I said I'd ask, and I haven't asked yet, yeah. probably. I'm not sure if it's for you, Sage, or Musashi, but it's around, in the persistent mode, uh, your upgrades and what you do, how does that uh, come over to this? Come over to the competition, does it not? Oh, great point, great point. Oh, interesting. Musashi, what do you think? Uh, I don't know if we can <laughs> talk about that yet, but uh, I mean, there's there's uh, definitely ideas, on, um, you know, crossover between both modes. Uh, once we have uh, something more certain to share, uh, we definitely will. Yeah, but, but yeah, well, we're we're discussing that definitely. We, in, you know, add a bit more specifics to that. We we've been talking about the idea of uh, permanently upgrading your NFTs. I mean, that's been, for a while, it's like, I don't know if you remember other games, you'd go ahead and upgrade your NFT, and then when you sell it, it would go back to the base state. And that kind of feels not so cool. Uh, you know you know why. I know why they did it. Other games do it, because it's, there's a certain safety, safety valve in doing that. You stop runaway economies and things like that. You stop runaway um, inflation, or you, you stop creating, you stop the situation where you have a bunch of uh, leveled up NFTs that are nobody wants to use or not fun anymore. But in any case, um, so yeah, we're looking at that. Now the question, and you can see the challenge here, right? If you're sitting there in persistent town and you've played that for nine months and let's say you've upgraded, leveled up some of your NFTs and now you come back and every time you go into competition, you can just use those leveled up NFTs with all their superpowers and everything and you're just stomping everybody else. So there's a little bit of a matter of balance that we have to work out there. I think ideally, yes, it's your toy. It's your toy in the sandbox. You've upgraded it. You invest in it. But on the flip side, we've got to make sure that it doesn't just become a what I call a cascade, which is uh, my description for when you're playing a game and you start winning, and then you just keep winning, and there's no way for somebody else to overcome you. 
Um, and if anybody who's, who's played risk <laughs> kind of knows what happens, how that feels when that happens. Let's see. Let's, let's jump on to the next question and then maybe take a few more from the discussion. That's really all I have from questions. The only other oh. one I had was one that I think we answered earlier just about uh, there being like rivers or oceans or mountains in the Townstar Forever game map when you pick land. Okay. Yeah, we answered that one. So in the, um, uh, in the, in the persistent world, just cover everything. In the persistent world uh, map, the persistent map, everybody will start with the same one. And that's fair. And that's because we're going to create some gameplay in there, obviously. Um, that allows us to create some really cool and interesting scenarios. In the competition mode, uh, it'll be pretty much like we have right now, where you have a large map, you pick your town, each one has its different attributes uh, and, and different cool um, geo-related features on it. So, uh, yeah, and then, of course, somebody's going to say, wait, what about Land Rush, right? <laughs> We've already talked about that one, too. So um, that's the answer in that one. Let's take a let's take like one more two one or two more questions and then wait do we have an announcement that we're making uh, a sale announcement Michelle now? Uh, I mean we mentioned the UFO skin that's coming Monday. Okay. Do we have it's any details? Legendary uh, it's legendary rarity. If Top Boy wants to give Top any Boy. more verification before I just carry on. Oh, it's legendary rares. It'll be on Monday. Uh, so happy to share that part. Okay. Let's see. Is Top, top Boy, are you here? We were... I'm right here. There we go. All right. Take us home with this sale. What's this about? Yeah. So um, the UFO skin, it's, it's a legendary and rarity. Uh, looking to sell it on Monday. Um, try, trying to, you know, resolve some things around that. Um, so I didn't want to, didn't want to commit to the Monday sale, but I think we should be good. Um, same timing as usual. Uh, let me, let me read out the, 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 the pricing around that actually. So it's going to be, it's going to be $250. Um, there is a, a fairly short supply for this legendary. It's going to be 361 total in store. Uh, it's going to be sold in town only. So. Those are some of the details around that. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Monday, legendary price point, 250, supply 361. Willow Martin just shared that information. Okay, cool. And um, also, also looking to put the, the paved roads, the single ones back in store on Monday. Sorry, not back in store, but for the first time. We sold bundles recently. Uh, now it's time for the, for the single paved roads. Those are gonna be at, at a $40 price point for each one. Okay. Cool. Thank you. No worries. Thanks for jumping in. Uh, one of the things I do want to cover, and I noticed um, there's a couple of um, uh, people that keep asking this, is like, when's the game going to be released? And why is it taking so long to make Townstar forever? Um, just want to give a, a dash of perspective. Um, team is working incredibly fast at a very fast paced compared to a lot of other teams in terms of getting features into the game, getting the engine up and running. Um, it is an express train uh, that's going very fast and, and building, actually even building more momentum as we go. Um, when we, if we were to just to kind of step back for a second and say, if we're going to build Townstar forever from scratch um, and, you know, not release it, not talk about it, not show it and just wait, you know, do, develop it and, in, uh, in secret, in mystery, and then pop it out at the end of, you know, at the end of its build, normal build cycle, I would say it would easily normally take nine to 12 months, at least. And now some of you are going to go, oh my God, you said Townstar Forever will take, you know, 12 months to get done. No, that's, that's not it. I'm just giving you some perspective that if we were to do a typical game development cycle, it would take that long. What we're doing, the cycle that we're doing is to build it as we said, in public, piece by piece, uh, the same tactics and process that I've used in other games in the past, other web games in the past. Um, and that's to get you pieces and parts of the games that are functional and that you can play 
quickly and sooner and then continue to build the parts the extra parts and pieces um you know flesh out the rest of that 64 by 64 map with interesting scenarios and gameplay and we do that over time and so there's a couple of advantages on this in that we can start get stuff into the hands of uh players quickly listen learn find out what people like um, become students of the market as we used to say at an old company that i worked at um and really understand and, and when when players like and have fun with something then we can do more of that or if we introduce a feature and it's kind of a stink bomb hey, then we just we don't have you know we just stop making more of that one right so when we see stuff that players like and players like stuff we do more if there's something that they don't like we do less um, so it's really straightforward um so that's that's what we're doing and the goal is to get something into players hands as quickly as possible that's workable and fun so again people it's i just want to kind of touch on the fact of raising this point up because you know some people are like oh my gosh you know this thing it's it's only two months after announcement and it's taking so long right <laughs> um no this is uh we're moving very very quickly so you'll, you'll get to see that over time any other questions guys we should answer from the community any any last big ones and you know i noticed resource you're not talking very much did you have something you wanted to share with us today Why are you gonna call me out like that? <laughs> oh, you're sitting quietly in the corner. I figured um, if you're on stage, you should say you have something to say. Oh well, then I will. I will humbly sit in the audience and just and bask in the <laughs> awesome sauce of all of you because I I come bringing pom poms and I, I am your cheerleader. Right. I'm here for moral support. If you need me for anything, then I or comic relief, then I'm here. Well, you know, so you're running, you're running um, Townstar Live, right? You're, you're the, the uh, task master, the release manager. You're making sure everybody gets stuff done. You're herding cats, if you use that analogy. Um, how's, That's what I'm told. How's, how's the build going this week? How's the... Oh, you know, man. Top, the build top is boy rough jumped this in. week. <laughs> yeah, Top Boy <laughs> jumped in with a little bit of clue. Maybe you can share just a touch with folks to help give them... Uh, sensitize them a little bit to all the, the hard work everybody's doing. Oh man, uh, well, um, to, to say the least, this build is a little bit tough. Um, we're struggling a little bit with it on the engineering side. Um, the utility is proving to be a little bit of a pain in the in the fanny with our um, our current code base and uh, using Play Canvas. It's we have some tech debt, and which is what we call in the industry is just pretty much just mistakes that we probably should have corrected a while ago, but we did not. Instead, we built on them. Um, okay. So it makes things harder and harder uh, to put in and new features become harder and harder and utilities become harder and harder to add um, yeah. as, the, as we continue to build on that and not reevaluate these types of things. Um, so the, which is why the Godot engine is pretty magical and <laughs> everything that Townstar Forever is doing is, is, is amazing. But we're, uh, those of us who are in the trenches on the live game still, um, we're having a little trouble this week getting the UFO skin to behave with the animations the way we would like it to. Um, so we're a little behind. Um, so uh, just, what, you know, be, give, oh, us a, give us just a touch of more information about it. So you get the functionality in there, um, and then you have QA test it and look at it, and then feedback bugs. Is that the, is that the process? Well, ideally, the engineer that puts in the feature would test it first. To, to yeah. try to mitigate bugs, but okay. um, uh, any bugs, then it's, but then it is kicked over to QA. And okay. QA then beats it up, as I like to put it, and they test the daylights out of it and make sure that it's working correctly and it's functioning well with other aspects of the game and other things that are um, it's, that it's, it's supposed to interact with. Mm -hmm. And um, at that point, we, uh, we uh, make a build and we send it to you, crazy kids. Nice, nice. There's um, uh, there's a couple of different cycles it goes through, right? When when you you do the initial feature, then you have QA beat it up, and sometimes see, they find bugs and send it back, and then the dev or the team fixes it up and sends it back through there. Where are we at in that cycle right now? Are we on that kind of what we think is the last version, or do we maybe have one more version to go before we get there? Um, well, I think you did you did skip a couple of really important. Um, okay. uh, processes there. We we start out with um with design. Design needs to get okay. a hold of it first, and design um, and uh, UI needs to get a hold of it, and art 
They okay. need to put their heads together and figure out what something is supposed to look like. Okay. And then once that is taken care of, then it is decided and put on the roadmap when we're actually going to implement it according to where time is, is placed. And then we, uh, we stick the engineers on it to put it in place. And then I chase around okay. people and make sure that everything is in place for the engineers. So all they have to do is just come in and, and do what they do best. Um, yeah. And then, and then, of course, it's kicked over. Once they've tested it, it's kicked over to QA and, yeah. and whatnot. So, we're, and you're right, it does sometimes go back and forth where they will find stuff, and QA will find stuff, and then it's kicked back to engineering, and engineering will then have to fix it and then send it back over. And hopefully, they didn't break anything else right. in the process. Um, so, we are on the home stretch, but you know, if I'm being totally honest, we are struggling with this one. We really are. Okay. This, the utility is just giving us is giving us grief. Okay. But it's so super cool. <laughs> I know, I know. It is cool. That video shows off how fun. It shows off a lot of things. There's effects in there. There's functionality. There's cool, cool graphics. So well, thank you. Thanks for sharing a little bit of the detail on there and joining us on stage here. Um, last questions from the audience and discussion? In the discussion, Slack, any last questions? Mal, Michelle, did you see anything scrolling through there that we should jump onto quickly? Yeah, I was speaking with Will uh, trying to explain, but I'm in uh, the position of these are like concept features and like not existing and trying to explain like why someone's okay. And yeah, it's it's hard to be in a speculative conversation when I'm on this side and I'm like, something I might say might stick. So Will, I know what you're saying, but uh, yeah, there's, these things can be accounted for and you know, thought about and yeah, it's, these are like concept features like that we would like and how we would do them. We don't know yet, so we don't even know how they would look. So it's kind of an assumption thing going on there. But I can start some leaks if we're done with the questions anyway. Yeah, well, let's jump to the leaks. We're going a little bit long today. We had some good stuff to share, but jump in. I think everybody yeah, forgot we about the leaks. Yeah, well, I've uh, seen the mask and I'm just thinking maybe we're going to go without them. And then, well, I, I don't worry, everyone, if that ever happens, I will be in the Discord here. But today, uh, it's a kind of a bit of a story time. And then uh, I will go into the leaks. So I've seen a lot of people uh, mentioning the boxing facility, new crafts, you know, what's coming in terms of other crafts. Are we looking at other crafts, industrial crafts? There's, oh my God, we get so many questions on that. And I say, I agree. But what's going on right now is we've got a very, as Reosaurus has just explained, things are a little bit tough right now. So the art, I mean, I was saying the other day, I've seen lots of the fishing content, uh, well, the art for it and stuff like that. And it's amazing. I spoke to our art director and she's getting the pizza shops and sandwich shops, to, like thinking about what art we're going to need for them. And there's... Crap, on mal as a story. But yeah, so there's lots of like things already done. There's things being done. But rather than just go through the hassle of trying to get all that in the game now and the work that goes into a nice thick thing, like the beehive content, you know, with all the different units and the buildings, it takes a lot of effort. So while everyone was busy, our team, uh, you know, we've got our little team and stuff. I had the MetaMath made, a.k.a. the boxing facility, because I wanted to just try and do something fun. There's four metas total for it, and you have done two now. There's two left. I want to be very clear. If these metas seem weird or wonky, and you don't know why they're so crit, like some say it's hard, some say it's easy. You don't know. There's two left. It's just for fun. Then we're going to go back to the normal metas and the normal crafts. It was sort of just a point where we would have a little bit of fun. Now, why do we do it this way? Well, if anyone ever speaks to me, you know, I do not like that we've only got a free ingredient limit. Thanks, Will. But yeah, we've only got a free ingredient limit, so it's hard to really make a complicated craft line without going all out on buildings and units and all the different stages and whatnot, which is fine. I absolutely love doing that. But we don't have that luxury right this second, so we got the boxing facility, and I thought, yeah, we'll do some... We'll, 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 we can do the hard crafts and we can combine them. And you've done that now twice. You've done the food parcel and the gift parcel. The next one is a party box, and I've seen somebody say something funny in the chat. But the next one is tier 8, and it's a party box. And if you've done a food parcel, and you've done a gift parcel, 
<laughs> then Cotton Cheesecake will be very happy to know that now you'll be putting those two into a wooden box. But I am just going to remind everyone that there is this meta, then the tier 9 after, and then it stops. It's all for fun. I'm also going to remind everyone that the boxing facility does contain all the metas on it. If you look closely, this is funny people laughing. <laughs> So yeah, so as I say, these are you know the knock. It's not just going to be a continued thing. Of this, please don't assume that this is the whole thing that's going on. We've got a fun meta in Halloween. It's going to involve pumpkins. So you know, uh, there's going to be a nice break from the crazy ones in Halloween. But I just want to say there's two left, and then after, and it won't be long then before it's uh, Musashi who's going to be leading all the design, and everyone can ping, 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 ping uh, on Musashi there for all the new leaks messes the information but for now we've got two more wild ones from me and then we're going to go uh, into some more karma ones you'll be combining the two last metas into one and you will need <laughs> is she telling me to be quick here is that what Rhea Soros is saying am I am I waffling on here I not at all you're 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 taking it the wrong way I'm actually saying that you're giving away so many leaks so so many oh. many many <laughs> leaks you are just, you are just diary of the mouth right now, telling everybody everything all about October. And I'm like, no, stop. Don't do it. Yeah, well, yeah, I just, I just let them know there's going to be a little bit of a breathing space. And then there'll be one more wild one after that. And then it'll be to your standard metas as we move towards the forever uh, towns and stuff like that. And the new Godot version. But I just wanted to be very clear that some people might assume that, you know, there's going to be many, many, many of these just constantly coming. But I, I sit and speak with a lot of people in Discord, and we talk about, like, you know, I used to speak, uh, talk with people before there was a tier 6, so I added a tier 6. And, you know, now we're at the tier 7, we're at the, you know, we're going to uh, go to the tier 8 and the 9s, and we just see what happens. What's too much? Why is it too much? What do we need to change? There's going to be some changes, as always, to try and make the messes a little bit more comfortable, but no wild ones like the last one with big changes going in. Rheosaurus would probably come after me so it'll be some light changes if there are any but the all the points that are in now are going to stay the same except for the uh, gift parcel which will obviously be lowered ready for the party box to take the big points but if you're doing blue steel decorated cakes any of the other metas they're staying in the cash rushes are staying in uh, you can practice basically for this next meta now uh, until we get it in so hope that helps that's a lot of stuff that's a lot of shares there what do you guys think? I was trying to get it out quick enough because I didn't want to delay the thing too long, but yeah. Sorry for the speed waffle, everyone. Feel free to just tag me and ask me questions over if you're confused by anything, but there'll be lots of metas in. It's not just going to be this crazy one. You can just ignore it and do blue steel, decorated cakes, pumpkin pie. That's boosted. Sangria is boosted. So, you know, there's lots of other options if you don't fancy this one. Looking at everybody, October was already my favorite month before Mel started talking. <laughs> uh, yeah, look at that. There's a lot of uh, lot of memes popping up. Crazy stuff, right? Um, well, cool. Uh, I think Michelle, does that bring us to a wrap? Is that the end of our session today? That's all I've got. Okay. Anybody else on stage here have any last minute shares or announcements or comments to make? I think I think that I would like, you know, in the spirit of Mal, we need a speed waffle NFT. I don't know what that would look like, but I have ideas. A waffle with yeah. shoes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, Sage. <laughs> Oh, that sounds cool. We should get the uh, we should start to sign up on that quickly before a moment passes. It could be very fun, actually. That would be a fun. I don't know what it would do, but that would be fun. Um, all right. Well, let's call it a wrap then, everybody. Today, thank you to everyone in the audience who was with us. Hopefully, you got to see some new stuff, some unexpected things, um, and got to know just a little bit more about what's going on behind the scenes. Um, yeah, we're trying to be as real as we can as a team, tell you what's going on when it's appropriate to share uh, what's going on. And, you know, uh, you know, some people were talking about, yeah, some of the stuff about it being hard to work on 
uh, the play canvas engines. That's just a reality that the team is facing every single day and also one of the drivers for moving to Godot and Townstar forever. Um, but we'll keep sharing that stuff to help kind of sensitize and, and bring you guys along with the journey. Uh, thank you to everybody on stage. One odd agent, Mao, Farmer Michelle, Musashi, Volkron, Resaurus, and Volkron, good job. I didn't hear any kind of weird Tom and Holland style leaks today. Um, <laughs> so awesome on that. And I'm sure everybody uh, had the same jaw dropping reaction when you shared your 64 by 64. Um, so with that, I'm just going to say goodbye to everybody. I'm going to stay here until whoever randomly closes the stage on me, recognizing names. But uh, thank you for showing up. And uh, thank you for everybody on stage, too. Thanks, everyone.